What's going on, guys? It's Kristen once again. I just wanted to share, you know, um, a word, you know, that God has, you know, given me. You know, I just get words all the time in this word because I just love the word of God. It's just so special. And it just, you know, speaks to us even on our daily lives that we don't even realize sometimes it's like, wow, you know, we thinking that's, you know, the Bible is just something old school. But no, it's, you know, timeless because you know it's the things that happen in the bible is happening today it's just in a modernized you know sort of way you know it's just you know modernized it's just different but i love the word the word is just powerful the word is fire so i just want to get into it and you know just encourage somebody with this word uh, if you have your bibles just join me i always read from the living bible translation so just join me in mark chapter 5 verses 37 and we'll read till verse 40 well i'll read till verse 40 sound like I'm in church and we'll read collectively <laughs> not collectively yeah anyway verse um all right mark chapter 5 verse 37 it reads then Jesus halted the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go on with him to Jairus's home except Peter James and John when they arrived Jesus saw that all was in great confusion with unrestrained weeping and wailing he went inside and spoke to the people why all this weeping and commotion he asked the child isn't dead. She's only asleep. Yeah, verse 40. They laughed at him in bitter derision, but he told them all to leave. And taking the little girl's father and mother and his three disciples, he went into the room where she was lying. Verse 41. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Get up, little girl. She was 12 years old, and she jumped up and walked around. Her parents just couldn't get over it. Jesus instructed them very earnestly to tell, to not to tell what had happened and told them to give her something to eat i know i said i would read till verse 40 but i actually meant to like uh, yeah the end of that chapter 43 and i just want to like encourage um us and just let you know that you know it may look like this child looked like she was dead to the people who weren't spiritual to the people who were faithless and didn't have faith the child looked like she was dead but she wasn't she was still alive but she was just in a, a state of, um, you know, almost like maybe chromato comatose. But you know what? You know, sometimes there, I just want to say that to say this, that there's some things in life that look like it's dead. Your ministry, some who are married, maybe your marriage or your relationships, your friendships, you know, you know, there are things that look like they're dead. But in God's eyes, they're not dead. They're just asleep or on pause for right now. I just want to encourage you to say, it's not dead. That marriage is not dead. Your friendship is not dead. Your job, career, it's not dead. And your ministry and what God has given you and the assignment he's given you is not dead. It's still there, but it's just asleep or on pause. And sometimes God will put things on, the, you know, in our life on pause or on sleep so that um, he can regenerate and reset us so that we can, like, go back into the ministry or whatever it is and um, go back with a passion and go back with a, um, a story and a testimony and let somebody else know like hey I've been in that dead spot too I've been at that dead end but it's okay because you know what God gets the victory in the end and he's gonna um, he's gonna like he's gonna deliver he's gonna get you through and it's not dead it's, you know it's just on pause for right now so you know don't be upset keep at it in prayer because even as we read in Mark chapter 5, Jairus, you know, one of the rulers of the synagogue, one of the um, workers of the synagogue, you know, he kept pressing in. He didn't give up. They came to him and said, you know, your daughter's dead. Don't even bother asking the Savior no more. But Jesus heard that and he said, you know, just believe me. Don't listen to the, what they're saying. You know, just believe me. And Jairus kept the faith. He kept the faith. He kept going no matter what they were trying to say or no matter what they were trying to um you know, do or interrupt the um, process or healing pattern for what, you know, God was getting ready to do. He kept believing. He still took him to his house because if he didn't believe, if he would have gave up on faith, he wouldn't have um, took him to the, um, he wouldn't have took him to his house. And so he kept, you know, he took Jesus to the house. Jesus had his homeboys. I call them Triple Fresh, Peter, James, and John. Man, my favorites. Yeah, he took them with him because you know what? And that's another thing about this, you know, chapter and verse that I just, you know, that I just love that, 
you know, when it comes to small, intimate things and serious things and matters, you can't take everybody with you. Not everybody who you even call friend can go with you on some of this stuff. Sometimes it's just you and God. Sometimes it's you and another mother in Zion. Or sometimes it's you and another prayer partner that's truly going to help you get through and get you through in Jesus' name. And so it's that kind of thing, too. You know, that's another thing I noticed about this um, chapter. You know, Jesus didn't take all his disciples with him. And what I love, what I absolutely love, more than just the disciple part, you know, the people that were faithless, who started out crying and weeping and wailing, and then Jesus said, this child is not dead, she's only asleep. And then they started laughing and, you know, getting all caring, all with the laughing, like some comedian was in the room, and Jesus was like, you know what, put these fools out, put them out. They're a distraction, they're all over the place. And like the last time I checked, if you wavering in your faith, it ain't going to get it. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. About as unstable as a, a three-leg table. <laughs> yeah, it's just unstable. And, you know, God's looking for your faith and your um, consecration to him to be, you know, stable and consistent. And, you know, not, you know, one day you're this and one day you're that. Mm -mm. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So he took the people that were strong enough and had faith enough, rather, had enough faith to say, you know what, you know what, he can raise her from the dead. Even if she is dead, he can raise her up and he can take the sickness and heal my baby girl. And he did. And this girl was 12 years old. And he just came in, took her by the hand. And in some um, King James translations, um, the translation is Talutha Kum which is, you know, rise up, damsel, or rise up, little girl. Now, if Jesus was southern, he was them down south, he said, little girl, go on, get up. <laughs> Probably like that. That's my little southern translation. But, yeah, and some things in life, you know, you think it's dead, or you think, oh, this is not, or this and that. No, just keep having a faith. It's not dead. The dream is not dead. Your marriage, your friendship, your um, wanted to, your dream, your wanting to do this or that, it's not dead. It's just on pause. It's on pending right now because God is preparing you for what he would call you, what he's calling you to and what he's calling you for. You know, he prepares us. He cares about our dreams, our hopes, our visions and our, you know, goals, especially when he gave them to us. And then sometimes that um, that pending and that pause is nothing but you know a time for you to be consecrated and to go into consecration time with God and you know just get in there with him and you know you know spend time with him and get that anointing and that oil on it so that when you do get into that dream or whatever it is it'll have more meaning to it because the anointing is there and the anointing going to and it's the anointing that destroys the yoke so yeah sometimes that's what it's about too you know the dream is not dead. You're just pending. It's just on pending. It's on pause. Like this little girl right here. She wasn't dead. This was supposed to be an act of faith. This was supposed to um, help Jarius, his family, and even his disciples. And even those who were laughing him to scorns, crying at first and then laughing to scorns, like a bunch of, um, you know, <laughs> not I won't say bipolar, but like schizophrenic, you know, people like out there like, oh, don't heal this girl. She did. You know, this and that, you know, it was supposed to be an example. And that's why sometimes bad things or little cataclysmic circumstances or something, you know, unusual happens. Because sometimes God wants to see, do you believe? And, you know, boost and encourage our faith. And, you know, just, you know, lift the faith up and, you know, kind of challenge it and things like that. I'm sure Jairus was definitely a good man and, you know, godly, God-fearing man because he was in the synagogue as a you know worker but this is a moment where God just increased his faith and healed his baby girl and re let her um, rise from the dead so that's just a, something you know beautiful to even think about you know they grew in their faith and just let you know the dream is not dead it's not dead God is just raising your faith up because he gives us all a measure of faith when we're first saved you know we get we're given a measure of faith and then as we grow in our walk with God and as we grow towards spiritual maturity, it grows and it grows. And as soon as you know it, you got a whole big tree of faith and you got apples in your tree, oranges, bananas, all kinds of uh, fruits of the spirit growing and fruits of faith just, you know, growing. 
and he grows that measure of faith and sometimes he uses trials I know we don't like it you know trust me you know little things you gotta go through and I don't like it either but sometimes God uses those things like okay you still gonna love me you still gonna be faithful you still gonna believe in me you still gonna be there and it's like well you know what Lord this is hard this is difficult but you know what it's like Peter said in John chapter 6 when Jesus got finished saying that he is the um bread of life yeah he said you know we we ain't got nowhere else to go we believe in you we're not going to turn away from you there's nowhere else for us to go and that's the way I feel in my walk with God that's the way I feel you know you know that's the way it's just nowhere else to go this world has nothing to offer it's dead it's not spiritual everything's you know you know through the lens of the flesh and it's got to be more than flesh just like my mom says life is more about more life is more spiritual than it is fleshly you know when I walk into a room my spirit comes first and then my body follows you know it's your spirit that goes in first and then your um then the flesh you know shows up so yeah it's just like it's just something to think about you know whatever it is that you're asking God for you know I know her hope deferred makes the heart sick but you know what it's not dead and sometimes the process can be long and is long, but God is just building up something bigger and greater within us and just, you know, making us as he would have us to be. So be encouraged. The dream is not dead. It's on pause, pending. So as you wait, worship while you wait. Praise while you wait. Prayer, be, uh, cease, you know, pray without ceasing as you wait and keep your eyes on the Savior. And don't be like, you know, Peter was when he got out of the boat and was walking on water and you know he was walking on water thank you Jesus this is good too he was walking on water he got out he stepped out and he um he stepped out of the boat much like us we step out of the boat of our comfort zone and we actually fulfill and we go for our dreams and we go for those things that we um our our passions and things like that and then we kind of lose sight when we get our eyes off Jesus and we get afraid but you know don't be like Peter and just start to sink. He was walking on water. He was actually walking on water. But when he took his eyes off Jesus, and then that's when he started to slip and fall, and he got distracted. You keep your eye on Jesus, you can't be distracted. So just keep your eyes on Christ, and then, you know, whatever it is, even if that dream doesn't come to pass, keeping your eyes on Jesus is always the best thing just in this life period because that's what's going to help you, you know, go and grow and just even get to heaven and that's what that consecration time is for you know I live for consecration time with God I'm not perfect and all of that and that's why I get into consecration because I want to be perfected in him I want that thumbs up I want that Holy Ghost thumbs up you know whatever it is that I do whatever it's making videos poetry I don't care what it is I'm like you know what Lord I want to you know look through the lens and the filter of my life through you and I want you to be pleased with me and my life and I want a thumbs up I want that Holy Ghost thumbs up like yeah I'm pleased with that green light go go ahead daughter go ahead you know that's what I live for and that's what you know we should all strive for in our Christian walk so just some words of encouragement the dream is not dead it's just on pause or pending even if it's in a comatose state God is able to rise that thing up from the dead. But first, we got to rise up in Him just by simply, you know, making Him number one. And when He's number one, all these other things will be added. You know, Mark, I mean, Matthew 6 33, Psalm 37, verse 4. So just to be encouraged, it's not dead. It's just on pending or on pause. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Love you guys. Be blessed and be encouraged in Jesus' name.